We are here tonight to talk about the resurfacing and related work on a section of North Main Street, Route 47, from Route 116 to Claybrook Drive. And let me just start right now and tell you that it does not include the intersection of 116 and 47. We're starting on the north side of, of 116 and going up to Claybrook on North Main. And um, with me tonight is Doug White to my right. He is your projects engineer out of uh, District 2 in Northampton. And that is Karen Axtell, our right-of-way compliance officer, who will explain the right-of-way process to us all tonight. And that gentleman... I am uh, Kevin Thatcher. I'm the project engineer with CHA. There we go. Kevin Thatcher. And this is John Morgan, also of CHA, your project manager. Kevin and Mark are working, excuse me, John and Kevin are working for the town designing this roadway. It's a town road, not a MassDOT road. Uh, we're just administering the construction and reviewing the design so that the money that's used to build it complies with federal regulations, that's all. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. This is a tremendous turnout. You have a beautiful road there. It's gonna be even prettier when it's done. I just wanna start by saying that. Uh, this gentleman is Mr. Walter Mantani. He is with Arlington Typing and Mailing, and he's capturing a verbatim transcript of tonight's hearing, which is required uh, by law. This is uh, at the behest of our chief engineer, Patricia Leavenworth in Boston. I work for her. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, this was advertised in the recorder on September 9th and September 16th and the Daily Hampshire Gazette on September 9th and September, uh, through September, excuse me, the Daily Hampshire Gazette uh, advertised on September 9th and the 16th as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn it right over to Karen. She'll read a brief statement and then the engineers will give you a presentation on what's proposed. I understand there's been lots of discussion in town uh, for quite a while on to arrive at this proposed design that's going to advance to construction. So with that, Karen, take it away. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. When the Commonwealth, acting through its Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division, indicated it would accept this project for funding, your municipality accepted certain responsibilities. One of those is acquiring all the necessary rights in private and public lands for the design, construction, and implementation of the project. My function is to review and recommend procedures that your town will use in acquiring these rights. The procedures used must comply with both federal and state regulations. The current design plans indicate there are four permanent easements and 56 temporary easements that will be required. The property owners impacted by this project will be contacted by your municipal officials. They will present the proposed impacts to each owner and discuss the methods with which they may acquire the needed rights for the project. Frequently, municipalities will appeal for donations to minimize the acquisition cost to your community. However, donations are not required and property owners are entitled to appraisal, review appraisal, and just compensation. Right-of-way documents will be provided to each owner to help them understand the acquisition process and how the project affects their property. Affected property owners' rights are protected under our Massachusetts general laws, primarily Chapter 79, and because this project is receiving federal funds, the property owners' rights are further defined under Title III of the Real Property Acts of 1970 as amended. I'll be happy to answer any general questions during the open forum and we'll be here as long as anyone has questions about their properties. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, you know, I skipped right over probably the most important part. Uh, your chairman of the Board of Selectmen asked me to let you know that, that this is also the Board of Selectmen meeting, which is scheduled at the same time tonight. Uh, I think he got frustrated with me not mentioning, having him come up and speak, but he's left the room. He may be coming back, but... Uh, <coughs> Anyway, we have a board of selectmen scheduled at the same time. Uh, having said that, engineers, take it away. Thanks, Don. 
All right, good evening, everyone. My name is John Morgan with uh, CHA Consulting. And um, some of you may have seen me in the past. Uh, we've done uh, several uh, public meetings for this project over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, today, I wanted to uh, go through the project. Uh, we have a, pre a PowerPoint presentation. Where we'll go through and uh, just tell you about what is being proposed and give you some background on, on uh, what the design is all about. Do you want to dim the lights a little bit? Or? Is uh, there a light switch over by you? There is. There are two, actually. We can do one of them now. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so this project uh, includes North Main Street beginning just north of the intersection at Route 116. It extends about three quarters of a mile north to uh, just uh, south of Claybrook Road. So within that uh, corridor, there's also the intersection with North Silver Lane. Um, and that's the extent, the limit of the project. And we'll go on to the next slide. So a little bit about, the, uh, a little bit about this roadway. Uh, we did a traffic count back in uh, October of 2015, so it's been a little while since we did that count. And there are about 5,000 vehicles per day on, the, on this section of roadway. So it's, it's a fairly well-traveled road. Uh, we did some speed counts at the same time and found that uh, vehicle speeds were approximately 45 miles per hour. Uh, that's the 85th percentile speed, which 85% of those cars are at 45 miles an hour or less. So some of the cars are traveling even faster than that. Uh, the, the speed limit out here varies from 30 miles per hour uh, right near the intersection of Route 116. Then it changes to 35 miles per hour for the majority of the corridor. And then at the northern end, it goes to 45 miles per hour. Uh, the speed counts were taking in, taken in the 35 mile an hour zone. So people are traveling faster than the posted speed. Uh, the as you probably all know, it's a mixed use, mostly residential, with a couple of uh, restaurants at the southern end. And um, this is a very historic and scenic roadway, and we're very well aware of the sensitivity um, to the character of the roadway. So this is a considered scenic byway, one of the uh, one of the only state and national scenic byways in, in the state. So we are definitely considering you know, what type of impact our project will have. So a little bit more about the existing uh, roadway. We did uh, accident research over a five year period. We found there were about five accidents that were reported. Those are only the reported ones. So there may have been more. Um, and there were pedestrian and uh, bicycle uh, collisions as part of those five accidents. So we have to be uh, wary of the safety for the, all the roadway users. Uh, there's extensive uh, pavement uh, cracking, rutting, a lot of patching out here. So we have pavement that's only, you know, it's really needs, it's reached a service life. It needs to be rehabilitated. It is uh, in fair to poor condition at this point. Um, the, the roadway does not have uh, curbing, and we are not proposing to add curbing as part of this project. Uh, the sidewalks, there are two existing sidewalks that are set back from the road, and those are also in poor condition, and they are uh, also quite narrow. They're, they're less than the uh, standard width of a sidewalk. Uh, per mass DOT. Um, and the other issue with the uh, infrastructure out here today is the uh, storm drains and the pipes and structures that are out here. The pipes are old, they're clay, so they are a lot of, a lot of them have collapsed and uh, will continue to do so. Uh, the, the catch basins and the manholes are also uh, deteriorating and need to be replaced. And uh, the roadway shoulders, 
which would be the paved portion of the road that is in between the yellow line. It, basically, you have a, a, a 26 foot wide road, uh, which I'm gonna go to the next slide actually. So this, this is a cross section of your roadway. The travel lanes existing are about 12 feet wide and the shoulders, which is the distance between the white line and the edge of the road, is only about one to two feet. So the total width of the pavement is about 26 feet wide today. And then though the roadway is then separated by a varying distance. Um, in some places it's quite a, you know, a large grass area before you get to the sidewalk, which is um, back at the outer limits of the roadway right of way. And that is, uh, those sidewalks are only about four feet wide. And they're generally generally behind the row of trees that uh, line the road. So one of the uh, locations we're looking at is the North Silver Lane intersection. Um, currently it's a wide configuration where you can travel on both sides of a triangular island. <laughs> and it provides, uh, it, it results in some confusion as to who has the right of way especially at the back side of that island. Um, vehicles that are coming off of North Main Street um, are conflicting with vehicles approaching from North Silver Lane, and there's no definition as to who has the right of way there at that point where the road's intersecting. So we're looking to make some improvements at this intersection as well. So this is just a summary of the uh, of the purpose, the reasons, goals of this project, what we're trying to achieve. Um, we're trying to address this deteriorating infrastructure, the roadway, the drainage system, the sidewalks, it's all, all at this point in, in poor condition. Um, we're trying to address pedestrian safety and bicycle accommodations to make the road safe for all roadway users. We'll, we have to consider not only the vehicles, but the uh, pedestrians and the bicyclists as well. We're looking to improve the intersection safety, and then we're trying to uh, remain sensitive to the character of the road and um, the context of what we uh, all know is a very uh, scenic roadway that uh, we don't want to change that character. So this is a list of some of the proposed improvements. Uh, we're looking to rehabilitate the pavement. Um, so we will be uh, doing what's called a mill and structural overlay. So we'll be grinding off the top layer of the pavement um, with a milling machine. Then we will uh, be putting back, uh, we'll be grinding off approximately an inch and three quarters of pavement and putting back four inches of pavement. So it'll be once we're completed, the road will be slightly, uh, slightly higher than it is today, uh, a couple inches higher, but there'll be more uh, pavement there than there is today, which will provide for a better, uh, a longer lasting roadway in the future. Um, we will also be doing some widening of the roadway from 26 feet to 30 feet. Um, so in general, It'll be about two feet wider on either side. Some places that widening may be more on one side of the road than the other, but in general, the center of the road will stay very close to where it is today. Um, the, uh, we'll be looking to make pedestrian improvements uh, with the crosswalks, and we're looking to make some enhancements there to make the crosswalks more visible um, using a stamped or colored crosswalk was the uh, proposal with the 25% design. And we're also looking to install our, what's called our rectangular rapid flashing beacon, which is a, it's a flashing warning light that a pedestrian can push a button. And uh, I'll go into that a little bit more um, <coughs> as we go on. We'll also uh, be looking to reconstruct the sidewalks to a minimum of five feet wide. Um, so we'll be increasing the width from four feet to five feet um, to provide it for a safer uh, sidewalk, also making um, them 
ADA accessible, improving the wheelchair ramps so that it, they are compliant with uh, ADA requirements. And then uh, we will also be looking to make some improvements at North Silver Lane, which will involve uh, a curb center median in the road to <coughs> try to calm traffic at that location. There'll be proposed drainage improvements throughout uh, the project, replacing the existing <coughs> pipes and drainage structures. There'll be new traffic signs and pavement markings. And we'll be looking to improve the uh, bicycle accommodations with uh, the, the wider pavement will provide for uh, a room for bicycles. So this is a, a proposed cross section. Um, the previous section was the 26 foot wide road. This is the 30 foot wide road. And what we're doing is uh, the, the travel lanes where the vehicles uh, will be traveling will be actually narrowed from the existing 11 to 12 feet that they are now down to 10 feet. And one of the reasons we are looking to narrow the, those lanes is to try to make it feel like it's a little bit narrower for the vehicles and uh, that will um, help slow down the, uh, the traffic. You know, it's not, it's not going to slow everyone down, but uh, the feeling that you're a little bit narrower will, will help slow some people down. And then we are looking to uh, create what is the minimum bicycle accommodations with five foot paved shoulders. So the white line to the edge of the road will be five feet and that provides a space for bicycles to um, use without having to share the travel lane with the vehicles, which they would currently have to do because the one to two feet that they have now is not wide enough for them to ride in. They have to be out in the travel lane. And then uh, we're also looking to uh, widen those sh sidewalks to five feet and we are keeping them out where they are today, out at the, uh, out at the property lines near the, uh, the houses behind the trees, so the, the sidewalks are staying relatively where they are today. Uh, this is a copy of the plans that we have here today. Um, it's difficult to s see at this scale, but uh, the project starts down here at the intersection of Route 116, and we will be um, adding um, a bicycle lane approaching Route 116 that will go in between a right turn lane and a through lane. So right here at the intersection will be a, a separate bicycle lane for cyclists that want to proceed through the intersection. And that bicycle lane will transition into those just five foot shoulders as you go beyond this parking area here. So right here at the parking area we'll have this defined five foot bike lane that will be uh, striped uh, in between the parking and the travel lane and then it'll turn into just that five foot shoulder as you continue northbound. Uh, some of the other things we're doing here is where we're doing a little work here at the School Street intersection um, to try to uh, improve safety. We're adding, proposing to add a crosswalk here um, at, schools, at School Street and doing a bump out here to uh, separate the parking from the intersection and that will help pedestrians uh, at this crosswalk to make it a shorter crosswalk. Um, we're also proposing a crosswalk uh, at the end of the parking area. So we have two crosswalks planned here to help uh, pedestrian activity in this area where we have the, the restaurants and uh, a, a, probably a lot more activity than the rest of the roadway where it is uh, strictly residential. Uh, this is just a computer generated uh, image of what the uh, roadway will approximately look like. So we'll have, this is the, the crosswalk right at School Street. So School Street is down here on the bottom left. Uh, just outside this view. And this would be the crosswalk at School Street with the parking um, at the park and ride sign and then the parking for the restaurants on this side. And what we would have is this striped bike lane right here um, in between the travel lane 
and the parking that will stay. And uh, we'll also have a striped bike lane um, in between the parking on this side as well. Uh, we are proposing to add a, a green uh, grass buffer between the parking and the sidewalk. Uh, that was one thing that we were proposing to add here as well. Um, oop, what happened? <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is a little bit more about the crosswalk enhancements. This is what's called the rapid rack rapid rectangular flashing beacon. So what it has is it's your standard crosswalk signs, but there's a, a light here that will, once a pedestrian pushes the button, this light will start to flash and will warn drivers that somebody's um, using the crosswalk. And those will be installed at, uh, right now they're proposed at two locations. Um, the first location was uh, just north of the restaurants and the second location, actually we haven't proposed it three locations. Uh, one would be at North Silver Lane and one at the very end at the crosswalk up by Claybrook. And this is a sample of what the uh, stamped and colored uh, pavement may look like. Um, the details of that have yet to be finalized. Uh, that's something we'll be working with the town on their preference on a color um, and material as, part, as the design goes forward uh, just to finalize that design. Uh, this is just a sample of what the corridor, uh, the main part of the corridor would look like, where you have the narrower travel lane and then a wider shoulder on either side uh, for the bicycles. And we'll be maintaining uh, the tree cover, the, the, the trees that exist here today, and uh, the sidewalks would still be back behind the tree. So as we move northward, uh, this is the intersection in North Silver Lane. Um, at this intersection, we're proposing to get rid of the, uh, the Y configuration with the island in the middle and make this a uh, standard T intersection with no island on North Silver Lane. Um, that will uh, alleviate that confusion that occurs uh, at the uh, intersecting point at the back of the island and uh, on both sides of the island. So in order to improve safety at this location and try to pr slow people down, we're proposing center median islands out in South Main Street. So they'll be four foot wide uh, with granite curbing on them so that people uh, have to slow down to go around these, around these islands. Um, there will also be a crosswalk proposed um, right here uh, to cross from uh, the east side to the west side of the roadway. Um, so the sidewalks are proposed to continue. Currently the sidewalk ends at North Silver Lane on this side. We're going to continue it down to the next residence and then it'll end. So it's not going to continue much further than it does today on this east side of the roadway. But on the west side of the roadway, the sidewalk is proposed to continue all the way to Claybrook Road, um, and then there'll be a crosswalk to cross over if, uh, for people that want to walk to Claybrook Road. Let's see. Uh, this is a graphical uh, simulated picture of what this little small center island will look like and the fact that you you kind of have to go around that center island and so there'll be a little bit of a, uh, that's the crosswalk that we uh, talked about at this location. And we will also have those rapid flashing beacon signs here at this crosswalk. Uh, they don't show up in this computer generated image, but uh, so if there's a pedestrian here, they'll be able to push the button and those flashing signs will come on. All right, um, so the, as uh, Karen mentioned, the uh, right-of-way um, along this corridor is fairly wide, but we do have, because we're doing the uh, sidewalk work, which is right against people's property, uh, the property lines for, for the uh, properties that abut this corridor are 
generally at the back of the existing sidewalk or very close to it. So we'll be replacing that sidewalk near that location. So in order to do that, the contractor may need to go on people's property to reconstruct that sidewalk just because they're working right adjacent to your property line. So that's why we have uh, 56 temporary construction easements on this project. Most properties along the, along the corridor will require this temporary construction easement that allows the contractor just to go and do their work and they may have to step foot on people's property. Um, in most locations, none of the proposed improvements will be on private property. They'll be within the roadway right of way. Um, there are four permanent easements required. One is a sidewalk easement where we are actually going to bump the sidewalk out onto a property and then uh, and that is in order to avoid impacting the roots to a tree. So we want to try to save the tree so we're asking for the sidewalk easement. Um, and then the uh, there's also three utility uh, permanent utility easements that are required for uh, utility poles and guy wires that may have to go onto uh, private property. So the project funding for this project, we're estimated to be in the two two and a half million dollar range for construction. Uh, uh, that number could uh, fluctuate a little bit as we go forward, but uh, that was approximately what we were looking at at the 25% level. And uh, that's planned to be uh, constructed as part of the 2020 Transportation Improvement Program. It's the, so that would be uh, federal fiscal year 2020. We're looking at uh, likely a 2020 spring spring start for the project. 21. Yeah. Spring of 21. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Not 2020. <laughs> um, so the next steps. Uh, so right now the project is what's at the called the 25% design level. We've submitted 25% design plans to MassDOT, they've reviewed them, issued their comments, and now the next step in this process is this public hearing where we want to get feedback from everyone and present what we're proposing, um, see if there's any uh, additional comments, feedback, concerns, so we can address those in the next phase of design, which is called the 75% design, uh, which we will begin working on after this hearing. Um, the goal is to complete that 75% design in November and make another submission to MassDOT for their review. And then the final design would, uh, we would finalize the design in the spring of 2020. And then uh, the project needs to be, the design needs to be completed and ready for advertisement by September of 2020 at the latest. At the latest. <laughs> That's the end of the uh, fiscal year to advertise the project. And then uh, we anticipate that this construction would begin in the spring of 2021. So that is uh, my presentation, and I'll turn it back over to Tom. John, terrific job. Thank you. Um, as John stated, we, we have a transportation improvement program that schedules the spending of our money uh, by the regional planning board, the Pioneer Valley Metropolitan Pioneer Valley Franklin planning? Regional Transit Authority. What's it called? Franklin Regional. That's who prioritizes the money? Franklin Regional Transit Authority? Um, Franklin oh, Franklin Regional State. Council of Governments, yeah. yeah. Council of Governments. Okay, well, whatever. We, oh, the whole state's divided up into 13 different regional planning organizations that prioritize projects and schedule them out in a rolling five-year plan. This project slated to advertise for construction in the, in the uh, fall of 2020, and that's when it will, because you've got a good designer with you, and um, they're right on schedule. The trick we'll be acquiring this, the, the right-of-way is always our critical path. Uh, however, there's very little right-of-way on this project. Uh, I want to stress that those temporary easements are just buying the right for a construction worker to stand on the edge of your property to build the back of the sidewalk. They expire after the end of the construction. We typically uh, negotiate a five-year window for those. So at the end of five years, you know, the work will be done much quicker than that, but uh, those expire and, and uh, the edge of your property remains as it is today, although maybe with some new loam and seed on it. But, uh, 
we're not we're not putting the sidewalk on your property except for in that one location I guess to avoid some tree roots um, so the most important part of this whole exercise is to hear from you we, we want to hear your suggestions comments criticisms nobody knows this road better than you we acknowledge that we want to hear what you have to think about what John and Kevin have put together uh, I also want to mention that there is this annex room if if you're finding this a little close in here there's another room where all this is on TV and if you want to speak you'd have to come back in here though so having said that are there any public officials who want to jump to the head of the line here and say something before we open it up to the whole crowd go for it all right so who who has any comments if you could yes Walter reminds me that uh, all we ask if you want to make a comment is to please come to the microphone, tell us who you are, first name and last name, and if you could spell your last name for the transcription so we get your name correct. Yes, ma'am, come on up. Hi, Lauren Stark, S T A R R. I'm sorry, your first name is Lauren? Lauren, L O R I N. Thank you. A yep. um, couple of issues. Um, I, maybe I am a public, I guess I am a public official. But anyway, um, coordination. So uh, we've got a couple of other, made these comments I think may have already come forward, but uh, we want to make sure it's coordinated with the work anticipated at 120 North Main Street, the affordable elderly housing. Uh, that's a change at the curb. Ah. So that needs to be integrated into your plans. Uh, we're looking at school, I'm chairman of the 120 North Main Committee and also oh. the Village Center Committee. Um, school Street, we're looking at a redesign of School Street, so we want to make sure that your plans coordinate with what's anticipated here, so we're not re doing things twice. Uh, we've had an expert look at the button ball tree and we want to be assured that, the, uh, yeah. that that will be adequately protected um, and monitored during this entire uh, process. Um, in general, with all the sidewalk work, I think we want to make sure we're not jeopardizing the health of those trees. It's what gives those, that, the street the character. Mm. And then I have a question. If we're going to have a five-foot shoulder, why aren't we marking them as a bike lane all the way through? We will put uh, sharrows in the, in the shoulder. In the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. So then my question, I guess, for the selectmen is if that's what we're doing on North Main, why aren't we striping South Main the same way because we're just in the... That's, and that's not your problem, but as right. long as we're here. And also the rapid flashing beacons seem like a way better solution than the permanently flashing beacons yes. that were just put in on South Main. So You'll have to talk to them on another evening. Okay. <laughs> so. But I just want, before you, uh, John, can you address those? You are taking care of the button ball tree. Uh, yes, we are very sensitive of the of the trees along the corridor, especially the button ball tree. Uh, there has been an arborist that has uh, made some comments, and I believe the town is looking to solicit uh, the services of a uh, professional arborist for just this project. Wow. So we are, and uh, we'll be working with Mass DOT's landscape uh, section, and uh, they have very detailed specifications on um, how to protect trees and roots on projects and we will be <coughs> implementing those specifications into the contract documents but we will be also uh, working with whatever um, additional uh, services that the town uh, wishes to do with respect to uh, arborists as well so we'll be consulting with both mass dot our own landscape uh, architects and uh, as well as any arborists that the town may uh, uh, wish to engage what about the coordination at 120 and at mm -hmm. school street um, we <coughs> are aware of the school street project um, i don't have all the details of it yet but i will be reaching out to the town to make sure i get the, all the details on that and uh, we can coordinate with their engineer as well okay. and do you have the details on the 120 north main uh no we don't have details on that yet so i'd be okay, happy to project managers here somewhere so okay yeah, we okay. can get them to exchange information okay. so we can all right Thank, Thank you. you very much, Lauren. I think the crosswalk that element they show should be right near. Can Can you just tell us who you are? I apologize, but this is for Walter. Sorry. David Pierce, selectman. I was just commenting that the crosswalk that you were referencing earlier is right near 120 North. Mm. Okay. Good to know. FYI. Yes, sir. <coughs> Michael O'Hearn, 127 North Main. I own two parcels. I'm sorry, O'Hearn. Ahern, A-H-E-A-R-N. Thank you. 
Um, South Main was just resurfaced and the sidewalks were done. First of all, I'd like to know from our humble, esteemed uh, leaders why North Main deserves all this extra work. When you widen a road, I've been a truck driver since I was 16, I'm nearly 70 and I'm still doing it. You ask the trucker <coughs> to get from point A to point B and we have a lot of truckers around here and if they're finishing up their 10 to 14 hour day, all they care about is getting home. They don't adhere to 30 miles an hour now and it's only going to get worse. And these sidewalks, if they're stamped, are going to make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. Perhaps maybe we could change it. Um, I just traveled this weekend down 47 all the way to Chicopee. And there's no place like you're proposing unless you're talking in front of Mount Holyoke College. So why does 47 for a mile need that extra width? I don't understand it. What we need probably is somebody out there looking, I don't know when you guys did your assessment of speed, but we have a lot of industry to the west and south. So check it out from 4.35 a.m. until 7 a.m. and then return between 7 or 4 in the afternoon and 7 at night. You'll see that it's quite a busy corridor and I think that 30 miles an hour sign is right in front of my house and it's kind of a joke. Um, so enforcement is, a, is an issue in every community we work in. Uh, this is a, a, a major corridor, it's a collector or an arterial? Arterial. Arterial. We can't put chicanes or speed humps or any of that kind of traffic calming stuff in this roadway because it is an important arterial. However, uh, we do acknowledge that there's a, as, as the speed was measured, I mean, it's, uh, people are driving too fast. The only solution is enforcement. I'm sorry the truckers like to drive fast and they want to get home like everybody else, but uh, you can't break the law. And um, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's a stretch for every community to provide enough enforcement out there. I mean, there's only so many police officers in town. They can't be everywhere at once. We acknowledge that, but that's the solution uh, for the speeding. As for the stamped uh, crosswalks, I think that's just an amenity the town probably asked for or, or was suggested. It's just a touch. I mean, that's, it's not written in stone. They don't have to be there if you really don't want them. I can't imagine that these three crosswalks over three quarters of a mile is going to make a, a big bit of noise, but um, maybe yeah, they will. The, the treatment for the crosswalks has not been finalized at this point, so uh, we certainly can look at other yeah. um, options for the, for the crosswalks. Um, we are trying to implement some traffic calming measures here. Um, narrowing the lanes to 10 feet mm -hmm. um, was one thing. Putting in that center media island, median island at North Silver Lane is intended to try to slow people down. They're going to have to, you know, it's not going to be quite as straight as it is now. They're going to go out around this center median island, and you know, they're not going to want to hit that granite curb going 45 miles an hour that's in that center of that island so they're going to have to slow down to go around that um, so we are trying to implement some things to help con reduce speeds uh, the, the reason that we're proposing the you know the wider roadway is to improve safety for bicyclists right. who are currently um, have no area for their uh, to travel um, on the roadway unless they're sharing the lane with the, with the vehicles. So providing that five foot wide shoulder or bicycle lane um, will, will help the safety for bicyclists on this corridor, which there are a good number of bicyclists um, in the area. And eventually, we'd like to see it all the way to Chicopee. 
However, we can't do it all at once. <laughs> so where we can, when we do a project, we, we introduce the five foot minimum width for shoulder bike accommodation. And eventually we'll get it all built up. But right now there's insufficient uh, access for bikes. Uh, they pay taxes too, as do the pedestrians and the vehicles. So uh, our policy for the last several years has been to, whenever we do a roadway improvement project, to improve it for everybody, not just the vehicles. Now there was a lady in the back. I think the lady, yes, you had a, your hand up. You'd like to say um, something? Yeah, I have a teacher voice, so I think sorry. I can interject. Yeah, you gotta work okay. your way up here. Yeah. We, we've got, we'll be here as long as you'd like us to be, so there's no rush. I want to get your comments. Yeah. My name is Susan Triolo. I live on Garage Road. Can you spell that, please? Yeah, T-R-I-O-L-O. -O. Thank you. Um, I would like to speak against the improvements you're making at the end of North Silver. That's a really nice walking area. I don't think there's any confusion about how to turn there. You either go left or you go right and you turn. Um, as a person who walks a lot, it's my neighborhood. And um, I know the kind, I think I know the kinds of improvements you're talking about there, which are on Pine Street in North Amherst. It's just a standard T. You know. Well, but you said you were going to put stuff oh, yeah. in the middle of the road that people have to drive around. But, yeah, the little Yeah, I'm down. speaking against it. Okay. I, yeah. I would like to maintain the rural com feel of our community, and I don't think it's confusing. I think that we have police officers that do enforce our speed limits on 116. Good. And maybe they can, you know, and that's a lot of that is at night, around 70s, et cetera. Maybe they can send some of those folks up on, on North Main during the daytime when the truckers are flying through there, because I know people who live there and they do really fly through there. I don't know that putting something in the middle of the road is going to slow them down. Okay, good, good comment. Um, pardon me, before you leave, you mentioned Seven O's. Is that a restaurant? What is that? Yeah. It's a, it's a local bar. How does it spell? Seven O's. Seven S E V E N O's. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Maybe they call the O's I think it's now. just the O's. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Come on up. That, that's exactly what we we're here for, to hear your comments. We appreciate that. Hi, my name is Irene LaRoche, and um, I live at 194 North Main Street. Uh, L A R O C H E. Capital um, R. Capital R. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So, a um, couple of questions and, and comments. Um, my one of my big concerns is the sound mm. of air brakes, yeah. and and the and the what I'm mm. looking for is calming to happen before the village. So, um, I, we hear those air brakes all day long. Yeah. Right at the intersection of North Silver and North Main, which is where I live. That's my house. So. It'd be great if that happened further outside in the more uh, yeah. residential area. Um, that wouldn't then impact the, the village um, atmosphere. Um, so sound and also I'm, I'm curious about the lights and the light pollution from the, the rapid flashing. Although I, I appreciate that it's not going to be permanent. Right. Yeah, um, but that's, a, that's something else. So I think light pollution, sound pollution, that all affects our community. Um, the other piece I'm curious about is if we could have, um, if the sidewalk's going to extend further past my house down the road, shouldn't the crosswalk maybe be at the end of that? Because, you know, people using that space to walk makes sense to keep walking down the sidewalk and then cross where it's ending yeah. rather than That's a very prior good to that. And it's a dead end. Yeah. I and guess the thought was that, you know, the only people who are going to use that little stretch are the ones who live in that one house. Well, as someone who's running in the neighborhood and, Ooh, and, and I run Clay, yep, so I would run down the sidewalk, yeah. keep going, cross over, and then keep running down to Clay, come around, circle back down. So, you know, just as a usage point of view, it makes sense for that to go all the way, the crosswalk to be at the end of that sidewalk. Um, and then the other piece I'm just wanting to think about is um, more, uh, more signage, more more calming things that the, the flashing light over on 116 the 40 miles per hour that reminds me every time ah. um, you know so that further outside the village would be i think a helpful okay. um, piece yeah i think i got everything the only thing about putting crosswalks i mean i, I know why john put it where he did it we, we like to put them at intersections that's where we all understand that, that they belong at intersections uh to put it a block away 
is mid-block. They're kind of dangerous places to cross. But I see what your point. You know, a lot of this is a, you know, uh, we can't put two in. They're too close together then. Uh, if we don't put it at the crosswalk, then uh, there might be a liability issue if somebody got hurt crossing at the end of the sidewalk. After you've run it once and run too far, you'll know to cross the street. Perhaps, maybe not, but we can figure it out. Yeah, I, I just want, and maybe, I, I'm not sure, I, I kind of agree with the, the last speaker. I, I don't see a lot of confusion happening there in terms of okay. people needing to know which way to go. Um, so yeah. I don't know about these medians. I, I want to learn more about that. Yeah. Thank you. It's a traffic con. Whenever you put something next to the, the roadway, it tends to put the driver on alert to slow down, especially if you kind of squeeze them in a little bit. And that's what the, the median islands do just at the intersection. They're also <laughs> removing that, that Y, that split, that weird island there. Uh, so it's just a conventional T. So it's. It's just a T with the little median islands, but it sounds like people don't like the median islands. Well, I just don't know about it, that's all. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. And then, okay. I'm well. <laughs> just for a different voice. Uh, my name is Liz Sillin, S-I-L-L-I-N. I live on South Main Street. I'm a member of the Village Center Committee. I'm also a member of the Swampfield Historical Society, so I've got a couple points. When we met with you before, one of the ideas I thought about having that traffic calming island was to make it more of a sort of a welcome to village center concept as opposed to a here's a barrier, you better darn well slow down. <laughs> um, so we were wondering if it could become maybe something that was maybe a, a marker that you were entering the village as sort of a message rather than, a, I don't know, just sort of make it a little more welcoming than just a concrete barrier, I think. Um, second question I had is, um, are you eliminating some of the parking in front of the Graves Memorial Library, which is uh, the one on the corner of School Street, right kind of up, there, up there? By extending that island out that you were talking about. Yeah. Right. I do think we lose a couple of spaces. Yeah. Two. It's one of our problems there is with this coordinate with the school street thing because if we lose that's the only parking for that building which is owned by the town is in front and then on the side and the hearing we had about school street was eliminating the parking on the side and if you eliminate more on the front and then eliminate on the side we don't have anywhere to park so just want to bring that up that's a great great comment thank you maybe you could throw some landscaping in those median islands yeah i mean we could look at uh, trying to do something to make welcome it to more village or more aesthetic, so it's yeah. something we can look at. This other young lady over there, yeah. Hi. Hi, I'm um, Lori Scarborough, S-C-A-R-B-R-O-U-H-L-A-U-R-I-E. With the Franklin Regional Council of Government. Ah, um, first, I just want to clarify that the body that programmed this project for funding in fiscal year 2020 is the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization. Ah, thank you very much for clarifying. Okay. Um, and uh, as a representative of the FERCOG, um, we have worked with the town on um, a complete streets prioritization Can you speak plan. Louder, please. Sure. Um, uh, with the FERCOG, uh, we have been working with the town on the complete streets prioritization plan that's been in place and is uh, responsible for the funding um, for the improvements on South Main Street, Old Amherst Road, and Hadley Road that have recently been completed. Um, uh, in advance of that, the town did adopt a complete streets policy and uh, we feel that this project is in line and meets the um, standards and practices of the complete streets policy that the town has uh, adopted on board. Great, thank you very much. How about that gentleman in the back where, in the doorway? Hey, uh, Doug Fulton from 140 North Main. F-U-L-T-O-N. Thank you, Doug. So uh, first, uh, I want to say thank you. I know I've um, been at a couple of these, and, and I, I see in this that um, some of the things that were talked about before seem to be reflected in terms of uh, keeping the sidewalks on the other side of the trees rather than moving them out closer to the road and, and some things like that. Uh, I, I'd still would like to hear, um, you know, I hear your point about you'd love to have the whole thing from here to Chicopee and hopefully north. 
I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, and, and you can, you know, you step at a time, but, uh, you know, as a regular biker myself who rides up and down this stretch all the time, um, you know, my concern is not the stretch of North Main Street that is, that is straight um, uh, and open and has great yeah. sight lines. You know, it's actually where this project ends that sure. it yes. starts getting dodgy as a, a cyclist. Uh, where um, you know that it, you've got the curves, um, and so and if that's so, my question and and maybe the person who's just speaking has some perspective <laughs> on this as well is how realistic is it that this continues north in what kind of time you know potential time frame, and if not, are we going from 30 with five foot shoulders? to 26 with no shoulders right where it gets dangerous and and is that actually better for for cyclists i, I mean i guess if the uh, uh, or how do you how can you make that not a potential disaster zone for cyclists as it funnels back down and um and they're suddenly right up against the cars again in a narrow stretch That's well i think for the length of the project, you're going to be in better shape as a cyclist. You're going to have more room. You'll be safer. You'll be further from the vehicles. I, I wish we had enough money to do the entire state, but we don't. We, we have limits on this job that end at Claybrook and 116. Uh, you're right that the lady from Farcog, I, I can never pronounce that correctly, uh, will know in general, I suppose, uh, if the if the next stretch of North Main is going to get fixed anytime soon. Is there any? You can lobby for it. You can. You can. Right. Well. Right. I guess, But I mean, my question is: Is there a research about doing something like this, having that widening and where you um, transition like that back to what it is? Transition back, and is that um, you know, especially? I mean, I think this again in a rural situation with windy roads. Um, and that actually where it's narrowing is right as it gets windy. Um, so I, I'm not I'm, aware of any you know, studies no. of, of those transition points. Uh, we are proposing you know, signage to alert people that the, the vehicles now have to share the road with the, yeah. with the bicyclists um, All at, the bike those, at the end of the project. But other than that, there's not a lot you know, else that we can do at that location other than try to make people aware with signage. Um, I, I'm just going to invite the lady back up. Yeah. If you could address. Yeah, Lori Scarborough. Can um, you speak real loud, Lori? Sure. Uh, Lori Scarborough. Um, so the question is. How do you prioritize your bike? The, the rest of, four, I mean, 47 North past that spot where it doesn't seem like there's a lot of access to widen the road, uh, how realistic is it that that ever gets done? And are we, are we improving really then the situation by widening this road to four, four more feet? Um, I would hope you'd think so. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's- Do you want a two foot uh, shoulder or a five foot shoulder? Uh, well, again, it depends on the context, I guess, right? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm on a shoulder that then suddenly isn't there, you move over two feet into the cars. Where they are, that now I'm just into the tra traffic. That's, well, that's there. where you are now on right. North Main Street. Correct. I, I understand that, and they know I'm there, and I know I'm there, and I, and, I, and it's the, that same way the whole way. And all of a sudden, by cyclists, and and it is, it's streams of cyclists. I I go out myself, and sometimes with one other person, but you know everybody here has seen it. It's streams of cyclists who are going to be going along, and then my guess is they probably won't. Be over on that right edge. They will be because they know this road. They will be right on <coughs> the edge or in the in the in the main lane because that actually ends up being safer, forcing the cars to, to, to reckon with them right. than to be in a situation. Again, if it, if it was if it was the whole way, I would say this is wonderful. Like I, I can't wait till it's done. Uh, with it not, I'm I I actually I'm concerned. It's it's actually going to be a more dangerous situation. <laughs> All right, well, that, thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. And do, if you can comment on the rest of that North Main and if that is, has any feasibility or realisticness to it, that would be great. Um, 
Okay, so I guess I could say that future improvements on North Main Street are realistic in the medium term sense. Um, in the short term, the next five or ten years, um, I, w I couldn't say so. Um, the road is the responsibility of the town. It's the responsibility um, and prerogative of the town to initiate a project um, for future improvements on the rest of North Main Street. I believe the judgment was made to end the project where it is based on the, at the, the area of the village and also the anticipated cost of the project that it would fit into the available funds that are available for the whole Franklin County region. There's a pretty limited pool of funds that um, each town sort of competes for each fiscal year. Um, and I know that the town of Sunderland has another future project already sort of in the pipeline for that funding list. Um, uh, actually, that's a mass dot project at the intersection of uh, 116 and 47 that's coming up. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, bicycles in the travel lane are not uncommon. Um, they do not necessarily um, go against complete streets or bicycle safety principles if they're properly marked and signed. Right. Um, I think not ideal. It's not ideal. Obviously, separate accommodations are safer and prefer, particularly by cyclists, as you say. Um, but this is the way the roadway is now. This is the width that the roadway is now and has been for a very long time. Um, it's a good thing that we're seeing a lot more cyclists on the roads, and the more we see, the more drivers see, um, the more familiar they are. Um, with how to drive around cyclists, hopefully the better they are, cyclists and, and um, uh, motor vehicles are at sharing the road together because as you say, cyclists are taxpayers too. They have all the same rights to access the roadway that motor vehicle drivers do um, and it's the responsibility of whoever's uh, in charge of that roadway to accommodate all users as safely as possible. So. I think that's the goal of any future project. Thank you. Or Great. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name is Laura Baker, B-A-K-E-R. I'm the project manager for the Sunderland Senior Housing Project, ah, which welcome. is a planned, thank you, project of 33 units at 120 North Main Street. A um, couple questions and comments. Um, one just question about stormwater. There's a stormwater line I understand running currently under North Main Street that then hooks onto School Street, heads to the river. Is that right? Gentlemen? That is, yes, our understanding of. <laughs> okay. Um, is that, that the size of that line going to be increased or just maintained in its current size as part of the project? The current plan right now is to maintain its current size, but we'll be taking a closer look at the hydrology and the hydraulics of the pipes there as we proceed with the 75% design. Okay, thank you. Um, as far as I know, I don't believe there are any current bus stops along this section of roadway. No. No. So, in a dream world, having this affordable senior housing project at 120 North Main Street, we would hope to entice our, our transit company to run a bus stop in that location. And so, yeah. wondering what provision might be made in the planning stages to even reserve or kind of block out where a bus stop might be in proximity to this planned senior housing. You could reach out to them and see if they want to stop there? Yeah, we can look into that. Yeah, it, it's hard to get Great a Great idea. <laughs> but it's, it's harder if, you know, now while you're planning it, if we can at least yeah. not necessarily build a stop, but say, oh, here's where one could go. Right. It, it probably increases our odds of being well, able well, to if get they agree, you know. Oh, folks, oh, sorry, if you both speak at once, I got That's my fault. Sorry, Walter. Can you finish your comment? I was going to say that uh, while we're coming through with the project, if they agree, we right. should put it in under the federal nickel. As, so to speak. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great comments. Yes, sir. And then, come on up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's Fred Morinitis. L-E-U-R-E-N-I-T-I-S. 
Hi, yes. Thank you. 181 North Main Street. Um, I'm also a water commissioner, so I have some questions relating to the water services. Um, it, it, when you're widening the sidewalks, most of the curbs are located close to the sidewalk, being the property line. So I don't know how. Oh, you mean the, the curb stops? Curb stops. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. yeah. For the service. For the water service. Yeah. And also the bound pins are probably close to the sidewalks. Um, would they be incorporated into the sidewalk then? No, I think you're widening inward, aren't you? Um, yes, we'd be widening inwards. Towards unless the, the, so unless inwards, the inwards. Towards the roadway. The stops are on private property, aren't they? The, the curb no, stops? Not, not necessarily. They could yeah. be either, either or. Right. So any stops that are impacted by the construction will have to be replaced. Well, put an extension. Yeah. I, I, I Where would you like them as water commissioner? Do you want them on the street side of the sidewalk or on the back of sidewalk? Or? Well, I think you're going to find they're on either side of the sidewalk now. So yeah. we, de depending on, you know, you're going to find them either side. So if we impact one and have to move it, where would you want it moved? Well, you wouldn't move it. You would probably put an extension on it. And extend it in which direction? No, extend it up, because if you're going to pave over it, is we that prefer, We don't want it in the sidewalk. We want it next to the sidewalk, right? Well, you can't move it because the valve is straight under Oh, okay. It. I got you. So it has to be where the valve is. All right. So it doesn't go anywhere. It just, doesn't go anywhere. You right. just put an extension, and it's in the sidewalk. It fits in the sidewalk. I mean, we have them in driveways okay. and sidewalks. All right. But you just have to be aware. I mean, we can mark them, but whether you'll put an extension on them. They're, they're mostly Erie boxes. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring them up to grade. Okay. Doug. Yeah, I'm Doug White from District 2, Mass DOT. Yeah, the DOT will pay for any adjusting of the, of the service stops that are needed, whether they're going up or down. We'll pay to do whatever it takes to, okay. to raise it to the finished grade. Okay. And then um, also at that intersection that's going to be redesigned, there's a hydrant in that island. We'll, we'll be relocating that hydrant. Well, we we'll probably just remove it. No, we'll relocate it. There's another relocate. one right across the street. Well, they there. don't have to be, you know. I'm saying it's just, there's one within 40 feet at 194 North Main Street. Yeah. We wouldn't eliminate a, a hydrant. We would just move it to one side of the road or the other. I'm sorry, can you step on the again? Because I can't hear you. Yeah, I, yeah, can you tell us who you are? So. Yeah, no. no, I was just saying when he was talking about the, the um, uh, fire hydrant that's in the triangle, mm -hmm. there's another one in Irene's at, um, in, at 194 that's, what, that's like 40 feet away. So. Well, there's one on North Silver, not too far up. In yeah, the, that's what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, that's very close. Um, but that would be part of the project. Of, Correct. You know, it wouldn't. No cost to the town. What about now? We have two major laterals. The one going from on our water mains. Would they be upgraded? No. Before paving. Uh, uh, if they need to be, that would be included as non-participating work, meaning the town would have to pay for that. Okay. Yeah. Because that's not necessary work to the improvement of the roadway. If, yeah. It's if just that when the intersection was reconstructed, they gave us the option of leaving the water main as is, or they would renew it with um, ductile, because it's AC existing. If the DOT's work causes it to need to be relocated, we would pay for it. But if, if the DOT's work doesn't need to touch it, then any upgrades would have to be funded by the town. Okay. Right. And, but you were saying it's just milling to, to upgrade it, we would have to trench to, to remove and replace. For instance, if we were doing some work that required us to relocate that water line out of our way for whatever reason, I can't think of one right now. Yeah, maybe. I don't think they're, they're so if that, if that kind of impact to your water line doesn't exist because of our roadway improvements, then if you wanted to, um, to replace the water line, it would have to be paid for by but we could coordinate, the rate coordinate it with you yeah, as yeah. to doing that before your other Ideally, yeah, it would be great if you get in there ahead of us right. or if you wanted our contractor to do it during the roadway improvements, they could do that as well. And but you would pay for it. You're only milling. You're not, you know, 
Correct. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to trench. In That's room, right. In yeah. Place, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now there was a, somebody else who that gentleman in the blue, and then we'll get the lady in the doorway, and then this gentleman here. Hi, I'm Jeff O'Brien. Sorry, yeah. Jeff O'Brien, 134 North Main Street. Thank you. Yep, that's spelled right. Is it, is it Jeff or the J? J. J. Uh, the roadway is going to go up, you say, three to four inches? Yes. And is the uh, drainage going to go all the way to the end? Yeah. The drainage. Don't we have periodic catch basins, gentlemen? Right? No. We have some low points. In the roadway, that I see. Uh, is that what you mean? I'm saying on the side of the road, there's a, a couple of basins where things can drain. Yeah, we'll pick those up to match the new grade of the roadway. But are we going to extend them further up? Because I don't think they go up even halfway. Oh, are we going to add additional drainage to the roadway? Um, our, our understanding of the drainage system is that it does go. Um, it go all the way. It goes at least. It goes north of North Silver Lane. So okay. most of the corridor beyond that, it uh, I think the drainage goes so to the north. Put something oh, up. Let, let him okay. yeah. We do plan to replace all of the uh, storm drainage trunk line through there. Um, so at least a couple thousand feet worth. Yeah. With that, the combined grading things that will have to be done for the driveways, for the sidewalks, new catch basins will be placed likely at new locations. Um, but it will be, that'll be, the drainage will be a significant part of the 75% design, figuring out how it fits with um, the new profiles for the roadway as well as the sidewalk. And, okay. um, but it, it is a pointed area of design to come. <coughs> yes. Yeah, with the road being higher, right now it ponds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's it's three to four inches when it rains hard. It yeah. just sits there. And it slowly drains, but it takes a long time. It's a tough road to drain because it's so flat. I, well, we're also, have to, you guys were talking about the current amount of what do you call bike lane is all of about three inches <laughs> in front of my house. Yeah. If you want a bike, but the line's right there, it's three inches yeah. and bam, like that. So yeah. there isn't much bike lane. Uh, the other thing is the tree with the roots is my property. Oh. And the tree is in bad shape. Oh. Branches six inches, eight inches, ten inches have come down. Okay. Two, two or three of them would have taken out a car if my car was under it. Okay. The town comes, cleans it up. I got to thank him for that. Yep. But you look up and there's branches just shattered, mm -hmm. place after place. There's holes in the tree. Uh, the tree needs to be taken down. And I love the tree. It's on my property. I love the way it looks. Yeah. But the tree isn't going to make it, and to reroute a sidewalk around it. And it's going to die in yeah. a period of time. Now, lately, I've seen trees die, and then they come and take them down. Right. So I don't know if they want to anticipate this or not. We, I would suggest you, have you spoken to the town about it? Well, I've talked to everybody that's come in when the branches come down. Uh, I think a lot of times their trucks can't get up to where the branches are. Is the DPW person here? Ah, there he is right there. That's the gentleman you need to talk to. Yeah. If that's a diseased tree, I mean, it's probably to the town's advantage to have it taken down before. I mean, they had to bring through. a front end loader in to get the branches out one time. It came down so heavy, I think a couple of uh, Labor Days ago. Yeah. So. Well, that's a very, I, they're beautiful trees. It's a gorgeous road. And oh, I love the tree. I, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I almost hesitate to say take it down. If but it was gone, we could plant new trees. Of course, they won't be the same size as well, the gorgeous ones. It would be straight, and then you could put a new tree there, and yeah. it's good for another 50 years. Well, that's, see, this is great stuff. This helps the designer quite a bit. Yeah. Would you like to say anything about it? Sorry, folks Shoot. in the room. Yeah, I'll take a look at that tree. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear a word. Hang on a second. Please stop. Yeah. Folks in the room, I need you to just kind of keep it down because I'm getting a big muddle of sound, and none of it's getting oh, a so I'm sorry, the gentleman talking, would you please come you, up? You want to come up and, and just introduce yourself? Thank you. I got one quick question before. You yeah, go ahead. Yourself. Sorry. The driveways there now are also down. If you raise that up, it makes them slope even more. Are we going to try to level those? Yes, we will grade the driveways back so that they all work to the new <coughs> grade of the roadway. Okay, so you're going to have to add some to it or something. Right, but it's still going to drain the same way it does today. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much.
Thank you for coming up. George Emery, Highway Superintendent. Uh, would you spell your last name? E M E R Y. I'm sorry. Don't e -M -E -R -Y. To the mic. E M E R Y. Thank you. Thanks, George. Quick question on the raisin on the blacktop. Yep. Have you guys done a core sample to see how thick that blacktop is there? And there's a reason why you're not doing a full, full, full depth on that. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have done pavement cores along the corridor, and. Uh, the sub base uh, looked like pretty good material, so the treatment uh, was decided that a mill and a structural overlay uh, would be the best, most economical treatment. I'm just wondering because you're only milling out an inch and three quarters, and then you're putting four inches back on there. Yeah, yeah what's there now? I why you wouldn't take all the blacktop out and then do your do your base course and then your top on top of that. Here's some pavement locks here you can take a look at. So you can have these if you want. Uh, so these are the cores they took there. Pass that tree. I'll take a look at it. And see Thanks a lot. That'd be great, George. Yeah. You let us know. Uh, do you have John's contact info? Um, I think so. If not, I think Sherry might have it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks a lot. How about that handsome gentleman in the Patriots cap? Wait, George. Wait. wait. My name is Rod Rodak, R-O-D-A-K. I live at 118 North Main Street. And I see where one of the proposals where you're gonna put the crosswalk comes right in front of my house. Okay. And that little island right there, I'm worried about the snow in the winter time. If you ever came and look during the winter, that snow is piled up 25, 30 feet high, mm -hmm. and it doesn't melt until May. And so, George? <laughs> and so, my question is how much visibility clearance do you need on the walkway when that snow is piled up so high? I just made a new driveway for my house at 118, not the restaurant driveway, but right next to the house where they're going to have to plow the snow a little further onto that property, way over, and it's going to block the crosswalk. So That's a very good point. It's a concern that uh, it's we have. Been I mean, if there's a crosswalk issue. there, obviously, we wouldn't. I'm sorry, that. I cannot hear a word you're saying, and if I don't hear it, it doesn't get in. Why <laughs> don't you stand side by side and talk to right If there's a crosswalk there, we'll, we will not push snow there. I mean, if we do push snow there, then we'll have to remove it. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes there's so much snow in the winter, they block the driveway, and I have to call up George or you know have somebody remove it. Okay. And so you know it's going to be a big safety issue because yeah. all that snow from the blue hair and in that in front of Demos all goes on that grass. No, that's a great point. Yeah, so you know that crosswalk maybe is an appropriate place to put it. Mm. Why are you locating it there? Is it at an intersection? I, I'm not familiar with the. 118, or is it because of the restaurants? Or is there an existing one there now? Yeah, there's, there's going to be like three cross, crosswalks within an eighth of a mile or a tenth of a mile. This one, and then you're talking about the, that yeah. one. Probably the one year one. Yeah. That's probably the one you're yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can look at that. Yeah, we can look at that and see. Maybe, if maybe you're right. Maybe it's the most important place to have the crosswalk. Great point. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your patience. And before you speak, sir, sir, you mentioned DIMOS. How's that spelled? D I M O S. Thank you. D I M O S. Yeah. Saw it when I came in tonight. Okay. Uh, Justine Rose, one. I live on Claybrook Road. Uh, can you spell oh, that? R O S E W A R N E. W A R N E? Yes. Thank you. Rose, one. <laughs> um, so I walk the loop that a lot of people do. I come down North Silver Lane up to Claybrook. Uh, I've done it for about 20 years, um, about five to six days a week. And the crosswalk seems a little, I would say maybe one, but two crosswalks, one in front of Claybrook and one in front of North Silver seems mm. completely redundant. Like there's not enough people, I don't think, that walk across the street at Claybrook. You mean you make that loop and you don't want a crosswalk there? Yeah. I mean, there's not enough cars. I mean, and I do it at all different times of the day. Where's the crosswalk at Claybrook? 
Is there is a very end. Oh, yeah. there's another one at the very end. At the very end of Claybrook and at North Silva. I'm sorry. Oh, blank. I'm sorry. Um, so at the end of Claybrook and at the end of North Silver Lane, no, I literally have done it for a long time, forever, and I've never had an issue. I have a dog with me all the time, but um, the, it, I mean, for me, the issue, I love the sidewalk idea to Claybrook. For me, that's fabulous, because um, I do have to walk on the side of the road, and I have to go off the road because of the trucks that come flying down 47 and that's the issue for me the the amount of the speed that people are coming down 47 mm -hmm. um, and mainly and it's not just the trucks but the trucks are kind of scary mm -hmm. um, and in the wind and I, I walk in the winter too I don't um, so the crosswalk no there's not enough traffic to really is there a downside to having it I don't understand the negative part just it just, yeah, it seems redundant. It seems like a waste. Because I don't think there's enough people crossing that street. I mean, I'm, like I said, been there for 20 years. I see how many people come up and down that street. It's not that, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Okay, thank you um, for your perspective. If there's a way to, like, slow down the traffic, like, I, I know how you were saying the, you know, the thing off of North Silver Lane. Yeah. That makes a little bit more sense to me. And, like, Liz, to Liz's point about, you know, making it, come into our village center and making yeah. it prettier than those uh, those horrendous lights that are down here. Okay. Um, there's got to be a better way. Um, but, so. Good, okay. Yeah. Which side of the road do you walk on? I cross at North Silver to go onto the sidewalk. But, okay. On, um, so on, you're gonna have the conversation. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. yeah, yeah. Have it up here. So I, cro I cross on North Silver Lane. This is uh, Alex Hagler. 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 <laughs> oh, uh, on Alex Hagler, 243 North Main. I'm Eight. just curious, for those who do walk from North Silver Lane to Claybrook, which side of the road do they prefer to walk on, the east or the west? I walk on the west side. So I cross the street twice. I cross it at North Silver. And then I cross it because you have a little bit more of a sidewalk. There's no sidewalk on the other side of the street. It also, to make that, to extend that sidewalk, mm -hmm. that one house, I don't really get that. That also seems pretty wasteful. If you're going to have a crosswalk and you're going to go across the street and you've got a big sidewalk there, why do we need to extend it one house? For the people who live in that house. but. I, okay. I mean, that's... So, but again, I mean... No, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, this is my observation. This is preliminary design? Yeah, I got it. I, yeah. Okay. No, so, I, so, yeah, so I cross in two places, and that's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank I think you very the middle much. thing... Yeah, get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Doug, by all means. Just a quick response on the crosswalk that you feel might not be needed. One thing is, it's kind of an attempt at traffic calming. Just when people drive over a crosswalk, they know they're coming from the rural area into the right. village, and it's just a visual attempt right. um, at calming. So it might help a little no, bit. No, I see it in Amherst and Amherst College. You know, it definitely works there. It's, hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if the whole flashing thing, but if there's some way to. Wanna... Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. No, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> and then this guy here. Uh, Pete Murphy, 140. Just stand up, no. Okay, Pete Murphy, 143 North Main Street. Murphy, usual way. MRP. Uh, we live right next to the buttonball tree, and in mm -hmm. our driveway, we've got like this V. It's shaped like a V, and people, hundreds of cars a day, turn around in it. It's probably the best, but it needs to be fixed better because it's got like a hump in the middle. Okay. Uh, Is this on your property or? Uh, no, it's a town property. Okay, I see. But for people to go down and turn in one past driveways makes it dangerous. So we've got like this V, but that's that should be looked at. It's not okay because they go on the you know they go on the grass and yeah. And the other thing is, I believe that there's sewer lines under some of the sidewalk ah. connections and stuff where it connects that you could look at when you're going to be ripping them up. I think Kevin's doing all the utility work on this job. It's the usual. <coughs> I fully anticipate to find all sorts of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Old stuff, too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, uh, Gary Penza, P-E-N-Z-A. Uh, I am one I live at 195 North Main. 
which is right at the intersection of North Silver. Okay. Uh, my family also owns 199 North Main Street, which is directly across from the proposed uh, North Silver intersection change. Yep. Um, so to kind of backtrack, um, again, most of these people are my friends and neighbors. Sure. Um, I've lived here in town for 20 years. My family's been in town for over 100. Wow. Um, so, and mostly on North Main Street. Um, something about coming into the village of Sunderland, when the seasons are changing, when the trees are blooming, when the, when, I mean, when I was a kid, it was the maple syrup buckets when they were all maple trees. Oh, yeah. So, to come into that town and run into two big cement blocks, medians, Oh, oh. I, I'm talking about the medians. That will be directly in front of my house. Yeah. Um, I, I'm across the street from Irene, who talked about the light pollution. Yeah. Um, to have those cement, those big, medium, ugly barriers in the middle of the most beautiful North and South Main Street, um, I'm totally against. Okay. Okay. Um, number two, um, I know this is North Main Street is North Main Street, South Main Street is South Main Street. It's yep. a different project. I don't know if anybody here was involved in the South, were any of you guys involved in the South Main Street project? Okay, so I took a drive down there this evening before this meeting. Yeah. When you travel down South Main Street, the houses are, you know, houses that were born in the, the baby boomer years after the 50s, back to the, you know, 16, 1700s. Yeah. Everybody's driveway is in a different state. Yeah whether it's new, clean, gravel, whatever, there is absolutely no consistency where they pave South Main, where you come off. One person's will be cut straight with the street. One will, will be paved all the way back to the sidewalk. Uh -huh. Some will be paved five feet in. Yeah. Some are at an angle. So it looks like a total mishmash on South Main Street. Yeah. And I don't know what the parameter was when the engineers or whoever decided, hey, how far are we going to pave? I mean, if the town technically owns roughly from the road to the sidewalk yeah most homeowners you know pay for that paving when they when they get it done yeah but seeing when they repaved it it's completely it's a completely mismatch it's all different pieces so i don't i, I think that would look terrible on north main street yeah. Yeah. um if you're going to do it be consistent take in and like you said if we're raising the if we're raising it up a net of about three and a half to four inches right and we talked about grading i mean are you going to just pave three feet or are you going to pave no. all the way to the sidewalk like, it depends on the grade. The proposal is to uh, reconstruct those driveways from the road back to the sidewalk. Oh, is it really? Wow. Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> you should have done that on South Main Street. Where's Lawrence? There's the plan. I should have looked at the plan. <laughs> okay. Very um, good. Great point. So you talked about the um, temporary construction easements. Um, as a homeowner, uh, is there anything that we need to do from an insurance standpoint of liability? No. Someone gets hurt on my property that's working for the state. Well, Do I have anything to worry about? No, you don't. Okay. Because they're covered by their own insurance. The contractor has to be bonded. Okay. Um, and we, we talked about a potential start date of spring 2021. I know a million things um, in the industry can start, can slow things down and speed up. But what is the projected duration of the project? You know, if all goes well, weather bearing, timelines being met, all yeah. those things that you don't find <laughs> underneath <laughs> the ground. Probably a 12 month project. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And would they work through the winter or would they stop when the yeah. ground freezes? Yeah, we have to shut down. They'll probably have to shut down most of the activities. There might be a few things they can do in the winter, but. Okay. So we could be driving on a dirt milled surface road for the entire winter. It won't be dirt. Well, not dirt. Yeah, a, yeah, a mill. Uh, I, I, they don't mill unless they're going to resurface. Okay. Sure. Are they going to do after. everything at the same time or are they going to do the roadway first and then the sidewalk? Are they going to do the sidewalks first? And then the roadway. It's really a lot of that is up to the contractor to make mm -hmm. that determination on what order they'll do the work in. Uh, Mass DOT will have a resident engineer on site um, inspecting the contractor. Okay. So that person will be able to answer questions during construction if the homeowners have uh, any issues. This is a very run of the mill kind of roadway improvement project. Sure, it's pretty straightforward. The box widening. So they'll probably do the widening first. Mm -hmm. They'll get the extra width they need to create enough room to move the traffic around while they work on the other spot. Gotcha. So they'll widen on one side, mm -hmm. then they'll widen on the other side. They'll move the utilities that need to be moved. Uh, they'll probably do any reconfiguring at, was it Silver? North Silver. North Silver. Uh, they'll reconfigure that. They'll take out that island, for instance. Okay. 
if the medians remain in the design, they'll do those. And, and then the last thing they'll do is uh, mill it and then pave it, stripe it. They'll probably take all of one year and they'll come back in the spring of the following year and loam and seed, spray it out and stripe it. So. All right, so as far as the pedestrian access, did any, was there any studies done on just how the people use and and you know like I said most of the people do what's what's called the loop yeah they, they come up and down either side of North Main Street yeah. they turn up North Silver Lane and they go up in, in you know they make their loop um, all the way you know back to the center of town or wherever they live up go there. up the hill yeah well, yeah that's where absolutely that's that's where I appreciate your enthusiasm but please don't let it talk sorry so yes that's where nine I mean I live right there I see it every day I talk to my neighbors every day that's where people walk. So again, you know, talking with Justine, so to extend that sidewalk on the east side from the intersection of North Silver, just over my neighbor's house, yep. and then have it stop at your driveway? At her driveway. <laughs> this, is the, this is the young lady that you've been talking about. Well, it's only gonna go to your driveway. So I mean, if you're in favor of the sidewalk, you got, you know. No. You work on. I'm sorry. Yeah, you want to come up and come on, start getting your answer. Otherwise, it's not in the transcript. We'll, we'll work on that. But, but I'm just saying is to 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 put it to put it intersect on a crosswalk there at North at North Silver Lane. Yep. You encourage people to cross there, whether they want to continue up North Main or whether they want to circle back towards the center of town. To extend the sidewalk over one house that just ends at her driveway. It just it's going to invite people to walk and then be crossing where there isn't a crosswalk and i just don't see a purpose for that um for that extension of that sidewalk there all right so. thank you very much right. ma'am thank you for coming oh, yeah. Do um my name is kimberly brazo and we live at 188 north main street uh hang on a second how do you spell your last name b r o z o oh yeah, so we actually live one house right. back from the corner next to Irene, who was up here before. So there's one house to the right of us, past North Silver, that the sidewalk would be included on there. And obviously, I can't speak for the owner of that house, but is this you or is this no. you? No, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, was, I was wrong before. I had we're, you know, we're right here. here. Oh, you're way over there, right? Here. This is Paul. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. Right. And I can't speak oh, I'm for sorry them, to bring but this you. is where right. it you? gets the narrowest. Sorry. I, I, My neighbor. <laughs> Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, by all means, you have the floor. It's your microphone. So I just, I just wanted to say, basically, where our house is at 188, we have one house to our left. Yep. And I, I see your drawings, your schematics. They look beautiful, but realistically, we don't have that kind of space. The, the sidewalk is probably about 15 feet from my front door. Okay. So when you're talking about four feet, that's not just, oh, I have all this frontage. I mean, that has a serious impact on us. Mm -hmm. I also have a drain. So the front of my house is here, and then we have about 15 feet to the sidewalk. And yep. my neighbor, to the left of me, if I'm standing at the house, it's an apartment building. Yep. So if you're going to widen that road, you're taking up part of its parking, which is already extremely limited. We have an okay. easement on that, so they have a right way for a driveway. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, we have a row of pine trees that have been there for a very long time. Okay. We have a fence that comes up to it. And the yep. sidewalk kind of squeezes in between that and a tree. And I noticed on your drawing here, you didn't know the two trees that we have in our front yard. You made some notations regarding um, proposed tree protection. Okay. And we have a maple tree in our front yard, and yep. we also have that small tree. There's a little island there. Right. So where you're proposing to put these blocks in, is one of the narrowest sections of town. I mean, when you come in through the intersection of 116, you do have frontage. It is beautiful, you have the sidewalks yeah. like that. But you get down towards our end, right before our silver, you don't yeah. have that space. So okay. four feet to me is really encroaching on the property. We have limited parking as is. And we also have a drain in the front, right in the border of our property. And Catch basin? Catch yeah. basin, great, yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of a, just very low area and yeah. Agreed on top and like mess. <coughs> so what, are we, what are we doing to improve that? Because I noticed there was an error on that on our property. Uh, that'll be restored to. I mean, there'll be a proper gutter there and catch basin grate and. Are you going to raise that up? Yeah. When the road raises. Right. Okay. Are right. you intending to remove any of the trees in that area? No. If they're shown to be protected, I don't think you're taking any trees anywhere, are you? 
there's a very Ooh. narrow section between that sidewalk and the trees. Kevin, it's uh, a very tight can area. You the illuminate road. us. Right there's there's an existing sidewalk there now. I mean, we're more or less following. We're just widening the sidewalk some there. We're not proposing to remove any trees in that area. They're widening um, towards the street, not to your house. Right. There's just that section of the road. There's not a lot of give from yeah. the sidewalk to the street One where foot? you have. Well, and, and I think to your foot. the point you're the. The overall right away width here is narrower than it is to the south. You are correct. So your house is closer to the edge of pavement in its current state than other houses are to the south. Mm. So yes, you are from a from a I guess ratio standpoint, four feet of widening will be closer to your house than it would be to another house in further south. But the widening is two feet on a side generally, right? So. We don't have a lot of give towards the road. The road will be coming towards your house two feet, and the sidewalk will be going one foot closer to the road. So that area that belongs going, to the town, it doesn't belong to yeah, your property. I'm not yeah. going to use that area for anything in the world. It's just we have oh. a lot of road noise as is, um, and putting in something like that or putting in a crosswalk that would cause noise, that really does have an effect on sure. the houses that are right there. We, yep. We're very close to the road, and you can hear those brakes, and you can see the lights, and we do have police patrolling and they, there's someone pulled over probably every other week in front of the driveway but it just having big stone barriers coming into a you know beautiful I mean, little town just doesn't seem I can like just maybe offer another description of these median islands besides giant stone blocks they're, <laughs> they're six inches tall <laughs> you know they're six inches tall and what four feet wide <laughs> at their widest and then they taper to nothing they're like teardrop shaped, I think. So is that section of the road gonna be an additional four feet? But again, they, well, if they're well, not favored the, by the if we're talking if we're talking about the median islands, they the median islands are approximately two hundred feet north of your house. Yes. Um, not, they're not in not front of in your front house. Of you. So their their width does not affect your frontage. I guess my whole point is that once you get towards the end, once you get around North Silver, there is the houses are a lot closer to the road. Like yep. The sidewalk you're proposing to put in to the end of that house, he doesn't have a lot of space between the road as is, so it just seems like something that there isn't enough demand to have that put in. And if anything, it could be taken away from his property value because you're putting a sidewalk in a public way closer to his house. But that's my thought. Good comment. Thank you. Uh, this this gentleman here. Yeah, you. Thank you. My name is Peter Gagarin, G-A-G-A-R-I-N. I live at 300 North Main, which is actually just north of your project, just north of Claybrook. Um, I had several, uh, a few comments about uh, the accommodations you're making for bicycling. Uh, you are planning to have a uh, marked separate bike lane as you get down close to the intersection and the traffic light that is between the right turn lane and the straight through lane for the cars. I believe that's what you predict. Right. Will there be anything in there? This may already be too close to the intersection to be part of your project, but it would be real nice if at some point that included something that would set off the light. If you're out there biking on a Sunday morning, there's not much traffic, and you can wait at that intersection for a long time, waiting for light until a car comes along. Okay, and it would be nice if either this project or the intersection project took that into consideration because they do have that at intersections in other places. Yeah, we have a bike uh, loops, right? Yes, uh, we can work with MassDOT. Um, they will be designing the intersection improvement project to see whether that would be something we would add to this project or if they would. That's a good uh, point. Yeah, that I would come appreciate if you look into it while it was still time to include it. Yep. It would be included uh, in well, this the intersection job. It gets done a few years sooner, so. Yeah. Um, second, uh, my concern with your uh, traffic islands is that to the extent they cause the traffic coming through to do a wiggle and then a wiggle back uh, may not be significant for a car, but for a semi-trailer, uh, the way they will make that wiggle is to encroach upon the bike lane mm -hmm. because they don't want to encroach upon the six-foot curb mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. And when they start encroaching upon the bike lane, okay, then, you know, now, I'm, now we're, we got to consider that. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. Okay, and it's I'm I'm being quite serious because they come along quickly, 
Mm-hmm. And the only way to keep their speed up, okay, is to just get out in the bike lane a little early, you know, and then a little bit at the end too, and you dock a couple feet off it and, you know, anyway. Yeah. Um, third point is you're putting down four inches of pavement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are the plans call for what's going immediately to the adjacent to that pavement, to the out, outside the road surface? Loman C. What I'm trying to avoid is. Well, you have a shoulder. We have. I think we're proposing milling mounts for shoulders, so it'll. What, be, I, what I'm gonna. What I want to avoid is situations where after looks nice when it's built. Yeah. After a year or two or some period of time, because of weathering or erosion or compaction or whatever, you end up with two, three, possibly four inches, just a little cliff going off to the side there. Yeah. Yeah. You're riding a bike, it's not good. Because sometimes, you know, maybe it's just you're not paying attention, whoops, and all the next thing you know, you've gone off the pavement, and now suddenly you've got a problem. Yeah. Okay? And it's also a problem if what you're doing to make it, I mean, what you want is something that is basically extends the roadway, the surface out at the same level, and it could be obviously, you know, sloped down as necessary, okay, and is firm. Yeah. And the reason you want it firm is I've seen where we did it on 47 just a little farther north of there, and they put in something like this TRG uh, dust or something, and a bike bike wheel goes into that, and it's just like going into sand. Uh Okay, and so it looks like it's a nice level thing, but if someone, again, doesn't pay attention or a car is coming too close and you bail out a little bit and the next thing you know you're losing control of your bike. So what they're, what they're proposing, I think, is a two foot wide shoulder backing treatment, four to six inches of compacted millings. As long as it you know. stays at that level, it yeah. doesn't drop down right. and is solid so a, a tire will roll on it as right. opposed to sinking into it. That's the that's what's okay, and you ought to be able to come up with something yep. that works for that. We okay, have it. Thank you. And then during the construction process, obviously that's not your responsibility. But do you have um, uh, any? I would be concerned about accommodations for bicycle when you are, for example, having one-way traffic, which you might have to have at certain places, or. Uh, squeeze down two-way traffic. Be during construction? During construction. And construction is going to last for a while. Yeah. Okay, and I would be concerned that uh, you're suddenly in a situation where there's not enough room for you and the truck, okay, trying to go through the same area because you temporarily have an area that's only 10 feet wide or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Okay, and there probably, it's not like you've got 10 feet of pavement and then grass, you've got 10 feet of pavement and then some sort of stuff on each side probably, which is part of the construction process. So I, I hope that somebody has thought or will think about how you accommodate the bikes through that whole period. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Okay, and do you expect that any time uh, the road would be totally closed so that a no. detour would be necessary? No. Under no circumstances? I don't believe so, no. We don't anticipate it. Because if you close the section between North Silver and Claybrook, for example, then the accommodation for the bicycle is to go up Claybrook, <laughs> which, you know, I'm happy with, but a lot of people would not be really happy. <laughs> so so. You're in great shape. <laughs> um, and then the final point is not to do with bicycles, but I would think that if you build a sidewalk going all the way up uh, North Main, up to Claybrook, along the west side, then having a crosswalk there would get a lot more use because you would then have people saying, great, I'm going to cross over. Yeah. Okay, and we're not all as spry as Justine is uh, in terms of avoiding the traffic, and it would be nice to have a crosswalk there. Hey, Great uh, comments. Thank uh, you. Uh, just to follow up on that, a sidewalk was considered going all the way on the west end, but it did have right-of-way impacts. Are you talking the west side or the east oh. side? East side. Yeah. East side. Right, right. You're, only do, you're only planning one on the west. Right. Which at which point, yeah. having gotten up there, it would be nice to have a crosswalk so you could then actually have a loop properly Come down uh, safeguarded. On the east side. Okay, that gets you Claybrook onto North Main with a proper crosswalk. I would think that would be nice. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. In the back with the hat. Yeah. Uh, Mike Flannery, F-L-A-N-A-R-Y. Uh, my wife and I are at 121 North Main. I guess this is my uh, question is the distance between the two southern crosswalks. Yep. Um, I guess my, I just question what the necessity for the second one is. They just seem so close. Yeah, that came up earlier and 
we're going to look at that. And yeah, and uh, I guess yeah, that is, no, that's and, a valid point. I guess my, I mean, a practical sense, just like, is there a cost? To making them, if there's a well, there is, it's pretty yeah. insignificant given okay. the cost of the job. But um, no, you know, we'll, we'll look and see, you know, if both are needed or not. I, okay, we can easily take it out if it's, they are too close together in a typical sense. Okay, know. yeah, and, and you did, and you you had brought up earlier just the concern about having one not be at an intersection, and I just it, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think that one is at a. You're correct. Yeah, so, <laughs> you're right. Um, we like to cross, but that's where. The driver expects to see people crossing the road is at intersections. So that's why we do it there. And for the record, I would rather not have it there. <laughs> All right. Good. No, great comment. Great comment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, Jim Hull, H O U L E. In regards to the crosswalks that he was just talking about, actually at the end of your project is a crosswalk that already exists. Okay. So, we're so just you have three crosswalks within 475 ah. feet. Right, at the intersection. At the one. intersection, up by the corner store at the end of your project, and then you propose two more. Yeah. At the first proposal is where Warner Drive is. Yeah. Which Warner Drive actually leads to a construction site of low beds, paving equipment, construction equipment. And in and out of that driveway are two low beds, two flow boy trailers, deliveries. You're proposing to bump out the curbing there, mm. which is going to make it tight for those low beds yeah. to get in onto Warner Drive, which could cause a safety issue if they have to swing out into the oncoming lane. Yeah. Low beds are really long. 70 feet long. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great comment. And we can throw some, some uh, turning templates on there, make sure. It's designed properly. The little white dots in the road are mine. <laughs> I kind of measured it out already. They can, they can make it, but it is very tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, that crosswalk, I believe Liz, on the historical Yoga Graves Memorial Library, you're taking parking spaces away that are critical. Ah, because of the crosswalk. So okay. I would propose taking the one there, that crosswalk out. And leave this one. Yeah, because the one, the second one, I believe, is more towards where the senior housing oh, all right. development that came is going, earlier. which would make sense to me. That would be a good crossing point. Uh, I'd like to get back to, I believe George took your core uh, yeah. measurement. Do you remember what the core depth was of the actual asphalt? I got my own copy. <laughs> My question is, I just don't think an inch and three quarters is an ad adequate depth to go yeah. for reflecting. Uh, yeah, just rough, roughly summarizing six pavement cores that were taken. Yeah. It's, you know, eight to ten inches of pavement. Yeah. Out there I, now? Wow. Yeah. I'm sure that road has been overlaid numerous times. Okay. I would think if, if, you, core, if you milled two inches out, you could get less reflective cracking coming back up through the, through the pavement. Um, and I, I couldn't quite hear earlier on the, the width of the bike lane is five feet, which is proposed. Right. Is that the minimum? Yeah. That is, okay. Um, the other thing I couldn't hear when it was in the hall, uh, the five foot sidewalks, there's no impact onto private land except for one location. Which may be going away, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, Did I also hear that those um, the flashing lights at the crosswalks only three had flashing? Wherever there's a crosswalk, we're proposing. Oh, okay. No, I, there, it's three of them. Yeah, the oh, southern the southernmost one I don't oh. believe has one. Oh. But, which is yeah. the so southern the one end? is the one that I would post to take out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you leave it in, I don't understand why it that one sidewalk one. doesn't have yeah. flashing lights. It, that didn't make sense to me. Um, no. And the um, additional mix, if, if you only milled uh, an inch and three quarters and you put two and a half back in, is that to help with drainage issues? Actually, we're putting three and a half back, right? Four back in. Four, Four back. back. Taking yeah, out one and three quarters. You're milling three and a quarter. No, pick it up another two inches. Yeah. And putting four total. Yeah. Right? Two and yeah. a quarter. So it'll raise. You're raising that extra two and a half for drainage issues? Uh, 
No, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the primary reason, but I mean, it uh, certainly will. The extra pavement will help us take care of any cross slope issues that may be out right. there. So yes, ultimately it, it can help with drainage. One, one of the considerations for the pavement design here is that just to stay within the allotted funding also. Right. To do to do four more inches of base course would you know, double the pavement cost. Yeah, so I don't propose that, but I, I, would, I would think if you milled two inches instead of an inch and three quarter, yeah. would help better with reflective cracking. And then maybe instead of coming up uh, an additional two and a half, two and a half, two and a quarter inches off the road base, which there is now, mm -hmm. you'd only come up two. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you know yourself, Did you get okay. if the cracks are two inches deep, oh, that's where that crack's going to come back up through the through the. We pavement. can talk to him. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we can talk to the pavement engineer in Boston and yep. see, have him take another look at it. Yep. And uh, Fred, uh, with the water department, brought up some water line issues that he yeah. maybe, which isn't in your scope, but I think the town should also make sure that we address that with the sewer lines. Oh. The, the gravity sewer lines that come down to the center of town are probably, <laughs> I wouldn't even know, 70 years old. Oh. I don't know. Again, that but, would And be, I don't know if they well, I, encroach I, I, on the road at all or they're in the grass area. So it's under the sidewalk. Didn't somebody say that? I think that's the sewer lines leading to the houses, individual that, houses. That's so, the service lines. So, so, oh, 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 oh. The trunk lines in the roadway. Speaking to the sanitary sewer, um, I think for the most part it's a little bit newer because my understanding is that the storm drain, it's, it used to be a combined sewer system and it has since been split into a separate sanitary and storm system. So the sanitary lines are new but the storm drain lines are much older and that's what we're re proposing to replace. We're not, we're not looking to propose um, any replacement or changes to the sanitary beyond whatever services may be impacted by the surface improvements. Um, so, but the point uh, also made earlier about the water lines, the water line at least is what we have indicated from record drawing shows it on the west side of the roadway and generally in the grass strip, not within the pavement. Um, and I did, um, a few weeks ago have a meeting on the site which included George Emery, the, the highway super. Uh, one of the things that did come up was the possibility of replacing the water lines. And it is something that couldn't be done by, by the funding of this project, but it's something the town could do as an add-on. And, and there are some savings to doing that given if you have the contractor do it, he's already mobilized on site um, to do it. But it would be, it would be an additional cost. But also, it's more of a, I guess, potential option because the information that I have now is that most of the water line is not within the pavement. And when you said new sewer line, do you, do you have a date of when that was? I, I don't. I tell you, I have very limited plans as far as any record information for that. And so that's part. Also, I made the comment earlier about we're going to find stuff. That's because yeah. I. I don't have re record plans. Um, I just have some general understanding of when specific systems as a whole were constructed and what they're comprised of. Um, but that said, the sanitary sewer should be newer than the storm sewer because it's been split at some time in the past. I, I don't know when, unfortunately. The town would be the source of that information. Yeah. Um, the other issue, the, the lady who brought up air brakes, I think he's actually referring to jake brakes, yep. which is the engine brake that makes a lot of noise. Up, 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 up. And you can actually solve that with signage with yeah. to no jake brake right. area. Yeah. At, you know, at the Claybrook coming down. Um, button ball, and I would defer to the historical people, but um, is there any proposed idea of maybe putting parallel? parking spaces by that tree because I see people they naturally pull over and you can probably see that there's kind of a gravel area there now mm. if you're driving down you know now you're gonna have to go all the way to the center of town park your car you walk back a lot of people park just pull off to the shoulder and park there to look at the tree and I I don't know if there's enough room there but I think you could take a look at that that's a good idea 
Or no parking sign there. Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the people who want a house right yeah. there. Yeah, sort of yeah. Take control of the access yeah. to the tree yeah. so you don't exactly. have people damaging it. Yeah. I, I, I could go either way if it's, you know, don't park here is, is, would be fine with me, but I think right now you have people parking mm -hmm. there, so it probably should be addressed one way or the other. Great comments. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. My kind of segues into that. It was a perfect setup. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica Skibiski. Oh, Don't speak until you're there, please. I can't hear you. Sure. Jessica Skibiski, last name S K I, B as in boy, I S K I, 123 North Main Street in lovely Sunderland. Uh, so, my question is Sunderland Town bylaws for parking, curbside parking specifically. Right now on North Main Street and on 47, we have. Um, ability to parallel park on the side of the road with the addition of this five foot bike lane um, and by the Sunderland, um, you know, button ball tree, are we gonna prohibit parking year round? Right now we allow parking from April until I believe November 1st. So is that going to be extended to the whole year parking prohibited if we do this five foot bike lane and how is that gonna impact that travel? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That was it. Do you have any thoughts on that, John? We hadn't discussed that with the with the uh, select board uh, about prohibiting parking, but we can have that discussion. Yeah, we had, we had no plans to prohibit. Okay. Okay. So it'll remain the same situation as today. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it would be helpful. Okay, Irene LaRoche, 194 North Main Street. Okay, just um, I, I'm a question about, I'm just thinking about how when I pull out of the um, intersection of North Silver and North Main right by my house, and yeah. it's now the Y, um, the Y allows me to get out of the road fast enough that the cars coming on from down, down um, from Montague don't hit me. How does that work with a T? I'm assuming I am going to have to make a slower turn. You will. To get out onto the road, and so. You'll need a bigger gap. Okay, so then that's my, everything I have to say then is probably, at this time, is about that. Like, what is slowing things down? I mean, people are saying that a lot. It's been at other hearings that I've been at. You know, how things can be set up down towards Claybrook, outside the village, to get folks slowing down. Um, and one, I, I do see traffic stops. I, I've never seen traffic stops of any of the trucks. So yeah. I, I would have to ask the police if that's, yeah. if they, I don't want to, I don't want to misjudge them, <laughs> but yeah. I've never seen them. Yeah. I've seen them stop cars. I don't right. see them stop commercial vehicles. Um, and those are the ones that I'm seeing really flying. Okay. Um, with, it seems like the inability to stop. Yeah. Um, I, I know that um, I also have young children and I would love for whatever we do to be um, creating a space where they can feel safe to use all those roads. So uh, nobody's spoken about kids in the neighborhood, but I hope there'll be more kids in the neighborhood <laughs> and um, seeing them out and, and would be great. Um, so I appreciate um, that. And um, what I, I know that you probably can't answer this, but we're having trouble, I, I teach in Amherst in the roundabout that they put in by Triangle Street in Amherst. Mm -hmm. um, we just recently had students, we walked to UMass for field trips, we had to reroute them to a different route to a, a smaller crosswalk because the roundabout's so fast. Oh. Um, and there's no real easy way to cross it. So I'm, I, this is, I'm just been told this by the town officials, yeah. that that's an unsafe space. And so, um, you know, as you're putting in crosswalks, thinking of safety, if they were to do something with a roundabout here, and I know it's a different project than you, but I just think that it's interesting how it might all connect. Mm -hmm. um, my kids, we ride our bikes down and we cross over to be able to come down to the library, and we walk and cross over to come to the library. But I, I don't know. I just think all of it needs to be taken into consideration together. Mm -hmm. um, so that piece, and um, I think that was it. So the T, the T. Anything to make that so that if we're doing the, this T, then there needs to be a lot slower. I won't be able to leave that way. Uh, it's pretty dicey in the mornings. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Jim Hooligan. I just wanted to bring up the fact that I do know that the trucks drive fast, just like cars. Yeah. But you should take into consideration 
that a truck doing 45 miles an hour mm -hmm. looks a lot faster and sounds a lot faster than a car doing 45 takes miles a lot an hour. Slow down. Yeah, they also have 18 yeah. wheels to brake also. So it, it, we just shouldn't go, if, they're, if the police are stopping the cars, the cars are the guys who are speeding. They're not letting truck drivers go. Okay, very, very good point. Let me uh, ask this lady uh, who's had her hand up for a while, and then we'll get to this gentleman. Yeah, I'm Susan Triolo, Garage Road. I was just thinking about this speeding issue. Yes. And um, I was wondering if it's possible, like when you're starting to come down the hill from Montague toward the village, if you can't have those rumble strips across the road where people have to actually, you know, with signs, where they actually do have to slow down mm. before they get into the center of town. Rumble strips. Yeah. It's kind of like it beats the hell out of those bumps. Oh, right. Yeah, you know that they have all over Amherst now, so the drivers slow down. Huh. Well, what about that? Well, that's an interesting observation. I'm going to defer to our traffic expert, John. Uh, is that in the same family as a speed hump, and that we can't do that in an arterial? Uh, well, the, the issue with rumble strips would be mostly the noise associated with them. Um, so you certainly don't want them anywhere near the residences. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's true. That's this gentleman, yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Richard Dickinson. Yeah. 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 Sixty-nine South Main. Uh, I worked on the highway for a number of years here in town, and if you put those islands up at the north end, yeah, it's going to be a real pain for George to plow to yeah. clean up. Yeah. You get trailer truck coming off of North Silver onto. Either going north or south on North Main, they're going to run them over. Okay. They're going to, you know, even if they stick up there four inches. Mm. Look at your roundabouts. You got trailer trucks on Route Nine mm. in Milo Park or anywhere else. They're running up on those roundabouts with the trailers. Well, they're designed to have that inner apron for right. trucks. <clears throat> yeah. But if you had, you're not talking aprons up here. Right. No, we're talking median heights. Trucks here. coming off of North Silver or turning up there, and they do. Nobody I mean, likes these median islands. <laughs> 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 okay. You know, just like curbings on the side of the roads yeah. in the wintertime, they're nothing but a pain in the butt. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, on South Main, George just repaved it. It's great. Yeah. The road is 22 feet. Yeah. And. No stripe. Uh, no stripes, not he'll put them in there. Oh, okay. But he's got these foolish. Yeah, the, I know he put them down first. And well, the state probably did that or whatever. Okay. But <laughs> that didn't slow traffic down a bit. Yeah. And it's narrower than North Main's going to be. Right. I mean, down there we may have, you know, 11 foot travel lanes. Yeah. Because there's no stripes. But if once they stripe it, it's going to be probably down to 10 feet. Right. And it's not going to slow people down. You get a smooth road, they're going to go. Yeah, I know. Yes. And, as, and as far as the driveway approaches, he was saying that, you know, some go back a little way, some go back to the sidewalks. You're going all the way back. What happened, just in George's defense, yeah. and I'm one to complain, <clears throat> before the road was paved, I had me and... 70% of the people down there have ponds in their <coughs> end of their road driveways yeah. because they paved it before and didn't put any approaches in. Okay. So George, <coughs> after a number of concerns, yeah. put those approaches in back where the ponds were to eliminate them. Yep. Now, the town is setting up a policy where they're not going to go back any more than three feet from now on. Huh. And people are going to end up with ponds in the end of the driveways. And in the wintertime, it's not safe. Right. Because you got ice ponds. But on water. our job, we're going all the way back to the side. Right. I mean, but I was, in George's defense, that's why you'll see yeah. some driveways that go back five feet, other ones eight. In mine, I think he went probably six. That but may have been a town pond. job and not a f state job. Yeah, but that got rid of the ponds on top. And so he was trying to save money for the town, I think, well, and probably was. only put it where it was needed instead of going all no. the way back. <clears throat> I don't believe he was going to go much at all, yeah. if any. But he wanted to solve the pond. The number of people that were concerned about the ponds in George's defense. No, oh, I appreciate it. That's a great comment. It's a tough job being the DPW. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very I tough job. I worked here for 15 years. It's not easy. What? 
You should just move closer to the mic. <laughs> we should get you your own mic. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be good. No. Uh, Jim um, I listened to a lot of people. I didn't even notice the uh, medians before looking at the plans. Um, you could also do low profile, yeah. just concrete. Or rumble strips. Oh, yeah. yeah, in that area instead of doing the raising. This guy does <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, the well, thing is, I think that the initial idea is to slow traffic right. down. Yeah. That will that will happen. I think there could be a problem with raised granite curbing there, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think everybody is in agreement that we'd like to see traffic slower, slower. on yeah. that street. So any ideas you have, I think you should bring forward. On if we can solve that problem. Yeah we would all be billionaires. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Because that's a problem in every town yeah. and nationwide. The uh, driveways on South Main Street, that was a Chapter 90 town job that had nothing to do with oh, Okay, projects. yeah. There was a project with the sidewalks, which is where I believe the shared roadway symbol, bike shared roadway symbols, yeah. was part of the sidewalk project. Uh -huh. So that's, I think, why they have, they went in right away. I see. Because they were, uh, can't I can't think about it. The complete streets. Yeah, it was part of a, a complete streets yep. thing for the yeah. sidewalks. Okay. And it turned plastic. Mm -hmm. So it had to be done in good weather. So I think George is probably still waiting to line the rest of the road with the regular. Regular paint. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Wow. Hey, it's the last time you'll see the elected official do something positive. Scott Bergeron, <laughs> your chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you very much. I'm going to wait because I was scared. I was watching the other room. Yes, Thank you very yes, much. Thank you. You did. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Does anyone else have a comment? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Allison Penza. Um, I co-own 199 North Main Street, which is directly across from North Silver Lane, where so, you want to do all Oh, that. okay, good. Yes. P-E-N-Z-A. Thank you. I just want to second some of the, the previous comments about having that raised. Okay. Concrete. It's right in front of our house. We just, plus we have tenants there now, too, which uh. I'm feeling that that would be a real deterrent in them trying to get out of the driveway with those yeah. raised um, beds, or I don't know what you call them. Medium. Medium. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, as far as in the integrity of the town, um, keep it simple, as they say. Okay. Um, less is more, and I, I definitely agree with the you know less sidewalks and not being raised because there is a lot of noise with the J brakes. I think they were calling them the J brakes. Yeah. And J adding to that, yeah. you know, the printed whatever they call them. Stamped. Stamped, thank you. Okay. Stamped. Um, yeah. You know, if it's on the road, then it's quiet. Yeah. I don't know if there's a way of just Paint. painting. Yeah, we just paint. Which is really simple and so less expensive. Less expensive. Great comments. Thank you. So we're all for like 100. <laughs> Indian <laughs> Islands. Yes, sir. My name is Elias Lee. L-I-E-N, and we live at 62 Claybrook Road. And I'm all in favor of a sidewalk at Claybrook Road. And I, my understanding from one of these meetings a few years ago was that the state is the one that determines the speed limits on Route 47. Is that true? It is true. Uh, we use a process called a speed study which has to be initiated by the town, and then the state will do a formal speed study, which is defined by state law. And I, I caution you right now, don't ask for one, because they're based on primarily the 85th percentile That's what I speed. Yeah. You don't so want to have, have gonna it's going to move it up. It's not going to slow them down. But if, if your concern is to go slower, and you're taking out several of the of the uh, recommendations that were aimed yeah. at that. Well, that's a very good you're point. You're not going to be you. adding much safety or, yeah. or s slower traffic. A terrific observation by this gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other formal comments? If not, we'll close it formally at 5 past 8, uh, Walter. Uh, but we will remain here as long as you'd like to chat and go over the plans and what have you.
I want to thank you all for coming. We've gotten nothing but great comments. This is stuff that will really help these people design the project for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.